go to the derivation of uh, transport equation. Now, what, what you may be saying that I am calling it as a transport. Uh, if you see books on uh, fluid, uh, actually in chemical engineer study, uh, not fluid may not mostly not fluid mechanics is a separate course, but they teach uh, they study a course which is called as uh, transport phenomena. Because uh, this law of conservation of momentum and law of conservation of energy basically represent what we call as transport processes. Okay. So, when you talk of transport phenomena in simple language, when something is transported, what do you need? So, there should be a driver and there should be a passenger. So, here also you, I will emphasize later on that there is a driver and there is a passenger. Okay. So, basically what is happening in this transport equation is momentum and energy are transported and they are quite analog, then the transport mechanisms are quite analogous. In fact, I would uh, start this by what we call as the heat and momentum transport mechanism. There are basically two transport mechanism, first which is called as the diffusion transport and second which is called as the advective transport. Now, what is this uh, diffusion transport mechanism? This transport mechanism, what it involves? It involves it, it, how it occurs. What is the driver in this case? In the diffusion transport, random motion of the molecules. Random motion of the molecule is the driver for this transport mechanism. What is the driver in the advective transport? when a flow occurs, other than the random motion of the molecule, there is a bulk motion or what you call as the macroscopic motion of the fluid. The individual motion of the molecules results in a bulk motion. And in fluid mechanics, when we use a continuum concepts, we are not capturing this random motion of the molecule. What we are defining as point by point information is this bulk or macroscopic motion of the fluid. Note that. So, when the molecules in aggregate, so <coughs> this random motion is always there and it gives rise to the bulk motion. And what is bulk motion? A large number of molecules are moving collectively or as aggregates. So, these are the two drivers, but what it effectively results, what it, what is the passenger, what it transfers during this process, transport process. What is transferred, when you look into the <coughs> energy transport, the molecular heat flux transports the conduction heat flux. Random motion of the molecules transfers what we call as the conduction heat transfer. Whereas, if you go to the uh, advective transport, when there is a bulk motion of the molecule, what it transport in heat transfer is what we call as the enthalpy transport. So, there are two transport in heat transfer, conduction heat transfer which is by the random motion of the molecules and then enthalpy transport which constitutes the advective term by the bulk motion. And convective heat transfer is a combination of this conduction heat transfer and the enthalpy transport. If you look, uh, look into a good book on heat transfer such as in Cropper and David, this is the way they define convective heat transfer as a combination of diffusion transport, conduction heat transfer and advection transport which is enthalpy transport. <coughs> when you go to the momentum transport, the random motion of the molecules results in a pressure force. You know from kinetic theory, how do we define pressure by the random mo motion of the molecules. It also constitutes the viscous forces for the momentum transport. <coughs> the advective transport as I said that in heat transfer it contributes to the enthalpy transport in uh, momentum transport they 
result into momentum influx, momentum outflux. Okay. So, these are the two transport mechanisms which are involved in heat and momentum transport. So, let us try to understand those concepts through some example. Let us suppose you are standing in between ice and fire and you are standing exactly in the middle and let us assume that the heat transfer is one dimensional in the x direction, horizontal direction and let us assume that there is no flow. Then what is the temperature which you experience? You experience 0 plus 100 divided by 2. Why divided by 2? Because you are standing exactly in the middle. In this case, you are having equal effect of ice as well as fire at 100 degree centigrade. Note that here I am assuming that the heat transfer is one dimensional and there is no bulk flow. This is what is diffusion transport. This is what is pure conduction phenomena. Now, let me take an example of pure advection. Now, when we talk of advection, there is a bulk motion of the molecule. So, there is in previous case in conduction there is no flow. When I want to have pure advection, not only there is some flow, but pure advection means that the flow velocities are extremely high, extremely high. Now, in this case when you say flow, then you may think that there are two options, flow is from the ice side or flow is from the fire side and note that flow velocities are extremely high. So, if there is a very large velocity from the ice side, whether you will still experience 50 degree centigrade, if it is extremely high, although it is hypothetical situation, you will experience a temperature close to 0 degree centigrade. If the flow is from the fire side, you experience a temperature close to 100 degree centigrade. Note that this pure advection is a hypothesis or is an assumption, because hardly we get such large velocities. What happens in most of the real world cases is shown in the next slide that you have combination of what we call as advection and diffusion. The velocities are of certain magnitude. So, if the flow is from the ice side, you are let us suppose you will experience it. Let us say I have I am taking four cases. Let us say take a first case. If the flow from the ice side is 1 meter per second, then you will experience a temperature less than 50 degree centigrade which is from note that conduction is always there whether there is a flow or whether there is no flow. But in previous slide in pure advection, we had considered conduction heat transfer as negligible as compared to convection why uh, advection why because the flow rates were very very high. So, random motion of the molecule is anyway there conduction is anyway there if there is no flow you experience a temperature of 50 degree centigrade if the flow is from uh, the magnitude 1 meter per second you experience a temperature less than 50 degree centigrade, let us assume that you experience a temperature 40 degree centigrade. If the flow velocity increases from 1 meter to 100 meter per second, you experience a temperature as low as 10 degree centigrade. This is the flow in the positive x direction. If the flow is in the negative x direction, that is from the fire side. Similarly, you can experience a temperature 60 degree which is when it is 1 meter per second, 90 degree when it is 100 meter per second. So, these pictures may give you feel about what is molecular transport and what is advective transport. Now, let us come back to a more detailed conservation laws, uh, momentum conservation, energy conservation and finally, I am writing a single expression corresponding to those two. So, as what is law of conservation of momentum, rate of change of momentum inside the control volume which constitutes the unsteady component 
and across the control volume where you do the balance of the momentum fluxes which constitutes the advective component. And this is equals to the momentum source and the momentum source is generated by the pressure force, viscous force as well as if there is a body force like gravitational force. In case of energy, analogously you have rate of change term for internal energy or enthalpy of the fluid inside as well as across the control volume. And this is equal to heat gained by conduction and volumetric heat generation. These two can be combined and we can write a single expression where we can say rate of change of momentum or energy of the fluid inside and across the control volume is equal to momentum or heat gained by molecular transport and volumetric source term. Now, let us try to write a, what I am doing here. I am showing you the derivation of x momentum equation, y momentum equation and energy equation component by component. So, what is the first component of the conservation law? Rate of change of x momentum or for x momentum equation, y momentum for y momentum and energy for energy equation. So, what is this term? Density, here we are note that here uh, we will mostly discussing on a 2D control volume because when you want to teach, it is easy to draw a 2D figure as compared to a 3D figure. So, what is, in, when you take a 2D control volume, the volume of the control volume is delta x into delta y. So, this is the volume of the control volume. Density multiplied by volume is the mass and the mass multiplied by u velocity is the x momentum. Similarly, this is the y momentum and this is the enthalpy. And when you take the derivative, it is rate of change, time rate of change of x momentum y momentum and internal energy or enthalpy. So, with this I am showing you the derivation of the unsteady component of this transport equation. I would like to point out that in the lecture slides which I had given you, there I had changed the direction of this arrow because um, especially after discussion with Professor uh, Puranik as well as I know you had lot of confusion into this, how this x momentum will be going inside the control volume from the, in the vertical direction. It is easy to understand and appreciate that x momentum is going in the horizontal direction, but how x momentum is transported in the vertical direction is, I know it is little confusing, but uh, I will emphasize it here. So, what is small m all through this uh, in my course will be the mass flux, mass flow rate per unit area. So, there is a and this delta y is the surface area of the vertical surfaces of the control volume. This uh, the delta x is the surface area of the horizontal surface of the control volume. So, the mass flux multiplied by surface area is the mass flow rate. Mass flow rate for vertical surfaces it is multiplied by the u velocity as well as for the horizontal surface. So, mass flow rate multiplied by u velocity is the rate at which x momentum is entering or leaving the control volume. Note that here want, we want to know what is the net momentum, x momentum inflow and x momentum outflow. Note that here x momentum is going in by the mass flow rate in the x direction which constitute the velocity in the x direction. In this case, the velocity in the x direction which is u velocity is going inside the control volume by a mass flow rate which involves velocity in the normal direction that is a v. Okay. So, the u velocity is taken inside this control volume by the mass flow rate in the y direction note that. Okay. Now, earlier I had shown you that we get del f by del x. What is that small f here? It is the product of mass flux and u velocity. The product of mass flux into u velocity gives you x momentum flux. Okay, so, you, when you do a balance of this x momentum inflow and outflow and divide by the volume of the control volume, you end up with a derivative. Note that how we are getting the derivative. If you do not divide by the volume, you will not get delta x delta y, you cannot apply limit. So, note that all the differential equation which you get in fluid matrix and heat transfer are law of conservation laws per unit volume. Similarly, we do for y direction. Now, here you see that 
the v velocity is taken inside by the mass flow rate which involves the velocity in the x direction u velocity. Okay. So, here there is a net y momentum inflow from the left and bottom and net y momentum outflow from the top and the right face and when you balance you get derivative of y momentum flux. Now, when you do a balance in case of energy equation, now energy equation analogously you see what is the flux analogous to momentum flux here you have what we call as mass flux multiplied by specific heat multiplied by temperature this is called as enthalpy flux. Note that x momentum, y momentum and enthalpy all these are scalar they are being just they are basically there is as I said that there in this transport equation there is a passenger and there is a driver. So, in all this what is the driver? Where does this transport going? This goes based on the direction of the driver wherever driver moves that is the direction in which this passenger moves. So, who is the driver? In all these three note that mass flux is the driver, mass flow rate is the driver and what is the passenger? u velocity in the x momentum equation, v velocity in the y momentum equation and temp temperature in the energy equation and there is quite analogy, there is a same transport mechanisms in this advective transport. This occurs due to the bulk motion of the molecule. So, there is a commonality and we will use this commonality in CFD. So, in CFD what we say is that there are fluxes x momentum flux, y momentum flux and enthalpy flux. Let us denote, let us use one symbol for all these fluxes. Let us use a symbol small a. So, we have used small m, small f is a general flux. So, what I am now I am doing is that, that small f I am showing you in different ways. Small m is one of the flux mass flow rate per unit area, small a is what you call as the advection flux. Okay, so, here you get a gradient of advection flux. In continuity equation you get gradient of mass flux and what is this advection flux? In the momentum transport it is, it is x momentum flux and y momentum flux and in energy equation it is enthalpy flux. So, this completes the left hand side of the conservation law. Rate of change inside the control volume plus rate of change across. This across note that it involves the fluxes. Inside is basically represented in terms of del by del theta. This across is represented by del dot flux term. Del dot x momentum flux, del dot y momentum flux, del dot enthalpy flux. When you want to write a general expression of this advection flux, we, uh, we can use one constant c which is one in case of momentum equation and which is specific heat in case of energy equation. Now, this when you go to the momentum and energy transport, uh, there are two transport mechanism advective which I had already talked of. I had already shown you the derivation of from the advective transport. Now, there is a diffusive transport. So, in momentum what is the diffusive transport? The uh, forces and in case of uh, heat transfer what is the diffusive transport? The conduction heat transfer. So, let us start with the forces. In fluid mechanics there are two types of forces. <coughs> there are two types of forces are the body force. There are forces in uh, fluid control volume which is directly proportional to the volume of the control volume such as gravitational force, centrifugal force, force due to magnetic and electric field. And there are certain forces like fluxes which are proportional to surface area. As I already mentioned that this viscous stresses and pressure are per unit area they are directly proportional to area. So, they are basically flux term they are surface forces. So, this is that uh, left hand side of uh, we, this is the conversion of the left hand side of the conservation laws into the differential equation where this is what we call as unsteady term. This is this represents rate of change inside the control volume. This second term is the advective transport, it represents rate of change across the control volume. And the right hand side is 
surface force and body force in case of momentum equation. Now, what is the surface force? How do we represent surface force? The force which acts on the control volume. Uh, I will separately show you the viscous force and the uh, pressure forces and the body forces. The sigma which I am using here is the viscous force. Professor Puranik had already mentioned how do we represent the viscous stresses. Uh, there are two subscript. First subscript represents the plane in which this stress is acting and the second subscript represents the direction in which it is acting. So, note that in this figure second subscript is always x. So, it represents the direction of the stress. So, the stress is acting in the x direction in this figure and in this figure it is acting in the y direction. Note that if you take a fluid control volume this stresses, viscous stresses will act in any arbitrary direction. It is just that we are resolving into components. Why we are doing that? Because we are applying the momentum conservation laws component wise. So, from this figure we will obtain the net viscous force in the x direction. This is like a free body diagram which you have studied in your let us say first class uh, first course first year course in uh, engineering mechanics. So, from here you can calculate net viscous force in the x direction from here you can calculate net viscous force in the y direction and divide by volume because if you want a differential when you divide by volume surface area divided by volume gives you a length scale in the denominator and you take the limit of that length scale and you get a differential term. This is the key to getting the differential term. So, if you do that you get so earlier we got del dot m mass flow rate del dot a which was advection flux here it is del dot sigma which is viscous stresses. For x momentum you get del dot viscous stresses in the x direction in for y momentum you get del dot sigma which is viscous stress in the y direction. Uh, I will not go into the detail of uh, <coughs> the how do we obtain convert the stresses into strain rates and how we convert those strain rates into the velocity gradient this all this was taught by Professor Puranik in chapter on flow kinematics and uh, so I will just show you that uh, in fluid mechanics stress is related with the strain rates and the strain rates using flow kinematics are converted into velocity gradients and finally, I will show you the direct relationship of the viscous stresses in terms of the velocity gradients. So, what I am showing you in this slide is expression for viscous stresses in the x direction in terms of velocity gradients. Now here note that that is uh, CFD which uh, we will be taking here is mostly for in fact all for incompressible flows. We are not talking of uh, CFD for uh, compressible flow um, because as a mechanical engineer mostly we encounter uh, the incompressible flow situation and uh, most of you are a mechanical engineer. So, uh, for a incompressible flow this uh, relationship or the viscous forces acting on the control volume in the x direction can be simplified further. What we will do is just to show you the simplification in the next slide, we will take uh, out of this 2 we will take 1 mu del u by del x and out of this 2 term we will take del v by del x and we will apply continuity equation and we will simplify this further. How I will simplify? I will I will I will show you next to next slide a figure where instead of two there will be one, and instead of this two term I will show you this term only. So what I'm trying to say is that one of this two mu del u by del x and this if you do a balance and apply the continuity equation it comes out to be zero for incompressible flow which I'll show you in the next slide. So, out of the 2 mu del u by del x I take 1 mu del u by del x and calculate <coughs> net viscous force in the acting in the x direction. So, this 1 mu del u by del x x plus delta x minus mu del u by del x at x multiplied by if you take the 
if you divide by the, this is the total viscous force acting, I have not divided by the volume. You can divide it by the volume, this, then this delta x delta y can cancel down. So, out of the 2 mu delta u by del x, I am taking 1 del u by del x and out of this 2 term, I have taken 1 of this, this term. So, this del v by del x, if you divide by the volume, surface area divided by volume in the denominator here in this case, note this, this mu del u by del x is in the vertical surface. So, if you divide by volume, this delta y cancel down and in this case, you get in the denominator delta x. In this case, when you do a balance and divide by volume, you will get this delta x will cancel down and you will get delta y in the denominator. And finally, you get del square u by del x square plus mu del square v by del y del x when you apply the limits. Now, in this, you can take del y del x as common and you get del u by del x plus del v by del y. And by applying continuity equation for incompressible flow, this comes out to be 0. So, the previous slide can be simplified as this. So, I am not showing you two gradients, I am showing you one gradient. Why I am doing this is that there, there is a particular relationship as far as this gradient is concerned. <coughs> this gradient is in which direction if you compare with the surface area, tangential or normal. This stress is acting on which surface? and the surface finish on which it is acting, what is the tangential direction and what is the normal direction. So, this is acting on this surface, vertical surface, tangential direction is y, normal direction is x and what is the gradient you are having here? It is a tangential gradient or a normal gradient? It is a normal gradient. If you look into this stress, this is a horizontal surface. What is the normal direction y and here the gradient is in the y direction. So, note that viscous stress in the x direction for an incompressible flow is expressed in terms of normal gradient of u velocity. Note this word normal because we will use this characteristics in our discretization finite volume method. Similarly, you can do for viscous forces in the y direction out of this 2 mu del v by del y, if you take one of them and you take del u by del y from here and you simplify and apply the continuity equation, this can be converted into that this. So, here again note that viscous stresses in the y direction are expressed in terms of normal gradient of v velocity and what is the constant of proportionality? Dynamic viscosity. And in case of uh, conduction, so analogous to stresses here you have a conduction heat fluxes. And how do you express conduction heat fluxes? In terms of normal gradient of temperature and what is the con constant of proportionality here? Minus k. So, normal gradient of u velocity gives viscous stresses in the x direction, normal gradient of v velocity gives viscous stresses in y direction and normal gradient of temperature gives conduction heat flux. Note that all this term constitute the what we call as the diffusion phenomena, which is occurring by random motion of the molecule. What is the transport mechanism? Molecular transport. So, I can write a general expression. So, like for advection, we have used one symbol small a which represented momentum flux for momentum and enthalpy flux for energy. Here, we will use small d as a diffusion flux. Okay. And we will use a symbol gamma phi, which is called as a diffusion coefficient, which is dynamic viscosity for momentum and minus k for energy equation. And phi is a general variable, which is u for x momentum, it is like a passenger in this transport process. It is u velocity for x momentum, v velocity for y momentum and temperature for energy equation. And note this symbol eta. What is this eta? It is the coordinate direction, coordinate in the normal direction. 
surface normal. Note that these fluxes are acting on a surface and this is a normal direction of the coordinate system. Note that I am not showing you arrow here, why? Because when if I want to draw arrow for the viscous forces acting in the x direction, the arrows are in horizontal direction. For viscous forces acting in the y direction, the arrows, all arrows are in vertical direction, y direction. And for conduction, it is in the north surface normal direction. And what is this diffusion flux? I would again like to correlate with small m, sorry, sorry, small f. That small f was mass flux for mass balance, advection flux for advection transport. And what is this diffusion flux small d? It is viscous stresses in case of momentum equation and conduction heat fluxes in case of energy equation. Note that this viscous stress consists of normal component as well as shear component. The figures which I have shown you on two surfaces, the stresses were viscous normal and viscous and on other two faces it were shear, viscous shear stresses. And this is the, this is the differential form of those diffusion terms and we do a balance of this. So, what I am showing you is the capital D, this is the small d term multiplied by surface area. So, this is the total D, this is capital D y plus y, this is capital D at y, this is a capital D at x, this is the capital D at x plus delta x. It is a product of small d, small d is this flux term multiplied by surface area. When you do a balance and divide by the volume, surface area divided by volume gives you elemental length in the denominator and you end up with a differential term. Note that you get, here you get double derivative. For mass flow rate and advection, advection transport, you are getting first derivative. Why? And here you are getting second derivative. Why? Because the mass flux and the mom, momentum flux and the enthalpy flux they are related with velocities and temperature by the value not the gradient. Whereas, the viscous stresses and the conduction heat fluxes are not related with the, they are related with velocities or temperature in terms of gradients, normal gradients. Okay. So, when the fluxes are having gradients, then the differential term is a double derivative. If the fluxes are having the value, then the gradient is a first derivative, which you get for, so you get del dot m, del dot a, but here you get del square. Okay. This phi again is a u velocity in x momentum, v velocity in the y momentum and temperature in energy equation. So, let us, we had talked about uh, viscous forces, now let us talk about pressure force. For x momentum, we want pressure force in the x direction. Note that pressure is always compressive in nature. So, note that pressure and here I want to show you the pressure force in the x direction. Pressure is always compressive. So, on the two vertical faces, it will act in the horizontal direction. On the two horizontal surfaces, it will act in the vertical direction. But in this slide, I want you to show you the pressure force the differential term representing the pressure force acting in the x direction per unit volume. So, I am showing you the arrows only in the x direction and note that pressure force always acts in the normal direction. It is always a normal stress and it is always compressive in nature. So, they it is shown inward into the control volume, but when you do a balance, you want net pressure force in the x direction. And when you divide by the volume, as pressure is compressive, but you are calculating pressure force acting in the positive x direction, you end up with minus del p by del x. I hope you understand why this minus sign is coming, because pressure is compressive, it is not tensile. If it would be in tensile, then you will get plus here. And we are finally calculating the pressure force in the positive x direction. So, this is the reason you get negative in the differential for pressure terms. Similarly, the pressure force in the y direction per unit volume 
is expressed in derivative as minus del p by del y. And finally, you get x momentum as this different component. This is the rate of change of x momentum per unit volume. When there is a mom x momentum inflow and outflow, this is the net x momentum change across the control volume, which is expressed by this. This is the net viscous force acting in the x direction, which whose differential term is this. This is the net pressure force acting in the x direction, which is expressed by this. Similarly, this slide is for y momentum equation. Four terms, I am showing you the fluxes also here. Similarly, for energy equation, rate of change of enthalpy or internal energy inside the control volume. This is across the control volume when you do a balance. This is the total heat gained by conduction. This is the total heat gained by volumetric heat generation. So, with this I had shown you the derivation of the differential equation in fluid mechanics, which with the advent of CFD is called as a name stroke equation, which constitute not only momentum equation, but it also constitute continuity and energy equation. The earlier definition in fluid mechanics momentum equation is only called as name stroke equation, but in CFD we call this system of equation as a name stroke equation. I would here again point out that this equation right now I am showing you for an incompressible flow in a conservative form, because the derivation which I had shown you here is a conservative type of derivation. Now, here uh, this is the continuity equation, this is the x momentum equation, this is the y momentum equation and in the next slide there is an energy equation. Now, as I mentioned that this x momentum, y momentum and energy are basically transport equations. So, there is a driver I mentioned which is the mass flow rate, there is a passenger which is u velocity in x momentum, v velocity in the y momentum and temperature in energy equation. So, this equation is very easy to remember if you just draw your attention to these boxes. I am showing you two boxes, small box, big box. In the energy equation also there are these two boxes are there. So, there is certain commonality and we use this commonality when we want to develop programs in CFD. Like in your, if you are doing a programming and if some calculation have to be performed repeatedly some set of calculation, then you create functions and subroutines. So, that is the idea that here we draw commonality, we understand what are the commonalities and then appropriate develop functions or subroutines and use them. So, we develop subroutines for let us say unsteady term, advection term, diffusion term and send appropriate general variables. So, here we are trying to draw our attention to what is the general variables. So, this small box whatever I am showing you, here it is u velocity and here it is v velocity and in the next slide it is temperature. And what is this? This is like a passenger in the transport process. And what is the big box? minus del p by del x in x momentum, minus del p by del y in the y momentum and q bar which is the volumetric heat generation, this is called as source term. So, in computational fluid dynamy, this small box, we write a small general variable phi, which is u in case of x momentum, v in y momentum and temperature in energy equation and this big box, I am defining a general source term capital S phi, which is minus del p by del x in x momentum, minus del p by in y momentum and q bar in energy equation this constant C is one in case of momentum transport and specific it in case of energy transport. This diffusion coefficient is dynamic viscosity in case of momentum transport and conductivity in case of energy transport. Okay. So, with this I had not only shown you the derivation, um, but I had also shown you the general transport equation, which consists of unsteady term which represents rate of change inside the control volume, advection term which represents rate of change across the control volume, diffusion term which represents 
the net viscous forces or heat gained by conduction, source term which represents pressure force or volumetric heat generation. So, this is just what I had discussed in the previous slide. I will again emphasize the fluxes because this is it is very important for you to appreciate and understand get a feel of this fluxes because we use this fluxes uh, very commonly in uh, later on in finite volume method. So, I would again like to draw your attention in a different way that capital F here is a capital M, small f here is small m and here the flux is mass flux mass flow rate per unit area and this mass flow rate is consist of velocity normal to the control volume and this is not only used in the mass conservation, but it is also used in the x momentum equation, y momentum equation and energy equation as driver to advect the passenger which is u velocity, v velocity and temperature in transport equation. And there is an advective flux, this advective flux again constitute of the driver which is the mass flux and the passenger which is the velocity in case of momentum equation and temperature in case of energy equation. And the diffusion flux, so capital F here is a capital D, small f here is a small d and the small d constitute the viscous stresses in momentum and conduction it fluxes in the energy. Okay. So, if you understand feel and have a feel about this, you can do the derivation, you do not need to remember the derivation, if you have got a feel of this phenomena transport process, transport phenomena. It constitute of two transport mechanism, molecular transport, advective transport and the terms are directly coming out from those transport processes. Okay. So, after derivation and emphasizing about the fluxes, uh, whenever you do CFD simulation, uh, whenever you do a research, if I want to be a little broader you want to do a research which is applicable for different types of people or let us say different types of fluids, different size of the domains, different uh, let us say in a flow there is a some inlet velocity. So, here there is a concept what we call as non dimensionalization. So, we try to do our study whether it is experimental or computational in a non dimensional form. So, in the next slide I will show you the non dimensional form of this differential equations. Whenever you take up a problem like flow across a car or flow across air aircraft or flow in a pipe, there is some characteristic velocity, there is some characteristic length scale. So, using those characteristic velocities and length scale, we non dimensionalize the di dimensional form and obtain the non dimensional form of the given equations and we get certain non dimensional variables like Reynolds number and frontal number shown here. Capital U here is the non dimensional velocity. In this lectures I will use small letters for the dimensional form, capital letters for the non dimensional form. When we talk of properties, I talk about the property when I talk about the movie in fluid mechanics. I, so, the movie in the fluid mechanics is expressed in terms of the fluid property. In case of compressible flow, density varies. Uh, sorry, the fluid property when we create movie, we create movie for what we call as flow property velocities, pressures, temperature, and vorticity. Now, what is fluid property? This is a thermophysical property like density, two types of viscosity, specific heat, thermal conductivity, and thermal diffusivity. So, note that there are two types of properties. And when you talk of parameters, there are two types of parameters, what is what you call as input parameter and second which you call as the output parameter. This non dimensional parameters like Reynolds number, Weber number which comes when surface tension is there, this Froude number when co which comes when gravitational force is there, this Grashof number comes when it is a buoyancy force. So, these are what is called as the input parameter or non dimensional governing parameter. These are what we can call as output parameter or output engineering parameters which engineers are interested. This is a non dimensional wall shear stress, non dimensional pressure drop, non dimensional drag force, non dimensional lift force, non dimensional representation of the uh, frequency of unsteady flow, non dimensional rate of heat transfer and so on. Okay, so, I will stop here.